We just experienced the end to the longest bull market in history, and it's sad and bittersweet to see it go. It lasted 11 long years, and now we're finally getting a do-over to start investing all over again, but there's one problem. We have entered horse market, not bear market. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Last week, we lost 9.99%, putting us in the fourth worst day of stock market losses, dating as far back as 1899. And that same week put us at position number 12 for the worst day of stock losses in history. And this all happened just within three days of each other. And because of that, there are so many people that are selling their stocks and going cash heavy and saying to themselves, this is crazy. I'm gonna wait this out and I'm gonna wait until the market cools off and everything calms down. And that sounds like a really reasonable strategy, right? Until you realize that you would have missed out on one of the biggest move upwards since 2008. And if you're new to investing, but you have no idea what any of this stuff means, but you just happened to click on this video because you saw an interesting thumbnail of this weird looking guy. Hi, my name is Andre Jick and now we're friends. And now you can trust me with your money. Hi, my name is Andre Jick, and don't ever trust strangers on the internet, kids. But I'm good, thanks for asking. Still in Russia, and I'm feeling totally isolated because the time zone differences, because every time I go to sleep, that's when the stock market decides to do its thing, and all I can do is just wake up the next day and react to it. And because of that, I was not able to invest a single dollar, which means I could potentially have missed out on one of the biggest stock market recoveries ever. And in this video, we're gonna try to prevent you from making my same mistake. So in today's video, I thought it'd be really interesting to show you which stock I'm going to be buying right now. It's my best investment idea under $100 considering everything going on. I'm going to show you step by step exactly what I'm doing, but please remember this is not financial advice. I'm not saying you should do this. I'm not saying you should buy this. This is just me showing you what I'm doing with my money. But this time right now is especially important because this kind of volatility or price price movement up and down usually doesn't last for a very long time. And that 10% recovery I mentioned represents one good year of growth in the stock market when looking at it over an average long period of time, over tens of years or decades on out. But this day of 10% happened in just one day. So ask yourself this, did you just miss one of the best investment opportunities? But the worst thing you can do is just sit on the sidelines as the market potentially continues to recover. Nope, that's actually wrong. That's the second worst thing you can do. The first worst thing is to panic sell and then borrow money so you can buy more stocks. Just don't ever do that. And right now, I believe the best investment anyone can make besides real estate, besides cryptocurrency, besides Bitcoin or gold is in the stock market because it's a super passive investment that does not require a lot of money. It doesn't require time to maintain. It's not gonna call you in the middle of the night to come fix its toilet. And contrary to popular belief, you don't need to know much to make money in the stock market. And if you're a day trader who does this professionally and you can read charts and tea leaves and you know how to do things and you're really smart, and you browse famous subreddits, then I'm sure my words have cracked your screen. But I truly believe that all you need to make money in the stock market is to be level-headed and to be consistent. And that brings me to investing right now because I have a little over $8,000 in my Robinhood account just waiting there, sitting to be invested, burning a hole in my wallet. My girlfriend Corey has several hundred dollars in Robinhood, but she doesn't know which stocks she wants to buy. She's also on the other side of the world shopping at empty grocery grocery stores, literally empty, no food, no toilet paper, no water, and no meat. And I know she's missing that one. Now I looked at a lot of different stocks to buy right now, but the ones I want to prioritize are what I consider my core. These are stocks that I think anyone and everyone should buy and I will prioritize them over anything else. Like for example, Disney, one of my best and biggest holdings. You think Disney's gonna go away? Mickey Mouse? No way. You know, some say that all of Disney's employees are actually secretly trademark lawyers. All we know is they're called the Stig. Stupid Top Gear reference, but maybe I should buy Johnson & Johnson, one of my favorite and largest dividend holders, a super giant that I would love to own more of at any point in time. Maybe I should initiate a position in Microsoft, another blue chip giant that everyone should own, or maybe I should average down and buy some more ExxonMobil and maybe lose some more money, but they have a giant 
9% dividend yield. It's insane. The energy sector is so beat up. But here's the truth. Right now, I don't have the time to think about which stock is the best one to buy. I don't have the time to analyze over 100 stocks to see which one is the best. All I know is that I have to react quick and I wanna be like the villain from Roger Rabbit. I want that dip. But what I don't want to do is be paralyzed by trying to become a value investor because right now there's value everywhere in the market and I don't know which of these value stocks will come out ahead and which of these value stocks will fall behind in this crazy volatile market. So instead, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and finally buy this best investment under $100 that I promised in this video. And the stock I'm going to look up is SPHD. And that represents the top 50 highest dividend yielding companies from the S&P 500 that are also the most stable or the least volatile in price. And right now, SPHD, at the time of recording this video, is yielding 5.55% dividend yield, which is sky high, even when factoring its really high expense ratio of 0.3%, giving us an effective yield of 5.2%. But what's crazier still is that in the last year, they've grown their dividends by a massive 7%. And in the last five years, they have averaged 11% growth rate, which is so, so high. So just by buying this one stock that is priced at $33 at the time of recording this video, that money will be spread out amongst the top 50 companies from the S&P 500 with the highest dividend yields that are the most stable. That's amazing. Alternatively, I was also considering VTI or VOO. VTI is Vanguard's total stock market index fund ETF with over 3,000 companies in that one ETF. And VOO is Vanguard's S&P 500 index fund ETF, which represents the top 500 companies in the US. Now, VOO is a little bit more on the aggressive side and VTI is a little bit more of a conservative investment. I actually own VTI in my M1 Finance Roth IRA account. And I just realized if you're investing for the first time, none of those acronyms actually meant anything to you, but there it is. Today, however, I'm buying SPHD because I'm a dividend investor and I absolutely love those dividend paychecks every single month. And while I'll admit Sometimes it's fun to be a value investor to try to figure out exactly which stocks are the best ones to buy. I just don't think that right now I'm smart enough nor quick enough to figure out exactly which ones I should be buying right now. I just know I need to move fast and I can't be waiting. I can let go of my ego and know that I'm just not smart enough to figure that out. And because of that, I'm just going to continue to DCA. Dollar cost Andre. And if you can do that, your money will roughly double every 10 years invested in the stock market. And that's because of something called the rule of 72. And that means 72 year olds get to make all the rules. Just kidding, that's not what it means, but sort of. Have you ever seen the average age and demographic of people who hold the highest positions in office? It's not very far from 72, but that's not really what it means. The rule of 72 is a really useful tool to determine how long any given investment will take to double your money. So for example, if you left your money in the national average savings account that generates 0.09% interest per year, it would take about 800 years for your money to double, which is really useful if cryonics was a thing and you could just freeze your body for that long and then wake up 800 years later and realize your $5 is now worth $10. But if you're comparing that to investing in the stock market and you're able to make 10% per year returns, then it would only take 7.2 years for your money to double. Fun useless fact, you can tell all your friends. And speaking of being consistent and not waiting it out like so many people are choosing to do, I wanna show you the real world impact that this has on your money. Because I found JP Morgan's Asset Management Retirement Guide and I found something really interesting. I wanna show you the real world impact that pulling out has on your money. There's a joke in there somewhere about pulling out and saving money, but I've made it before and I'm not gonna go there again. On page 18 of the Retirement Guide, it shows the impact that consistency has on saving and investing $200 per month. This is really funny. JP Morgan actually has a sense of humor. Meet Nervous Noah. 
Nervous Noah saves from ages 25 to 65, but because he didn't invest, his cash only generated roughly 2% per year, and after 40 years, he is left with $147,100. And now meet Quitter Quincy, who invests instead of just saves, and he does it from ages 25 to 35 for 10 years, investing at an annual rate of return of 6% per year, leaving him with $192,000. $1,600. Except that's completely wrong. Wake up! Seriously, I've been at this JP Morgan pamphlet for several hours and none of this math adds up. If you're a math whiz, please help me understand this because in what world does investing $200 per month at 6% per year for 10 years equal $192,000? Because investing your money for 10 years at 6% will only leave you with $33,531. And I've tried all sorts of mental gymnastics here. I even assumed that after 10 years, that $33,531, which is correct, would then be invested for the next 30 years at the 2% cash rate that says on the fine print at the bottom of the page, which makes sense, giving us the total 40 years that they use in their other examples. But then that still gives us only $158,000, which is $34,000 short of their $192,000 mark. So that makes no sense to me. I have no idea where they got their number from, but uh, that's a huge rounding error upward. JP Morgan, where can I get this investment? But moving on to our friend Late Lila, which is thankfully correct on the math that they did, who invests for 30 years at 6%, leaving him Yes, I said him, it's 2020, get with the program, leaving our bro, Lila, with roughly $201,000. Meanwhile, consistent Chloe, another strong boy name in 2020, who invests for 40 years at the same 6%, will be left with $393,700, which is almost more than double any other investment example I gave, which shows the power of time in the market. So now we've learned two things. The earlier you start to save and invest your money, the more money you'll end up having. And the biggest factor, of course, is time. And the second thing we've learned is that JP Morgan actually has a sense of humor, and I want to be just like Quitter Quincy, who invests for 10 years and magically ends up with 200 grand. Amazing. But now what I want to know is, how much money is it going to cost you and I in opportunity cost to sit this one out? Because that's what seems to be what people want to do. Check this out. In the last 20 years, if you chose to sit this out and miss the top 10 best days, your returns would be cut in half. Think about that. In the last 20 years, just 10 days of that is responsible for half of the returns in the stock market. If you had invested just $10,000 for 20 years and all you did was leave that money in the market, you'd be left with roughly $30,000 after 20 years. But if you missed those 10 crucial days in the market, you'd be left with just half of that at $15,000. But if you missed the best month in the last 20 years, you would end up with less money after all that time than you had started with, leaving you with only $6,000. But missing the best two months of the stock market would have left you with only $2,000. And many of the best days came just right after some of the worst days. Six of the best 10 days came within two weeks of each other. So you just have to be consistent and you can't get off this crazy roller coaster, otherwise you're gonna get hurt. And some of the comments that get left on my videos are hilarious because they're like, <laughs> I saw this coming. To which I respond, that's what she said, but also that's not a valid market crash prediction because you didn't give me a time frame. Anyone can say that a crash is in the future. It's always in the future. I knew this and I still stuck with it and I'm still staying in the market regardless of what happens and that's the best thing to do unless you need your money in the short term. In which case, don't invest money in the stock market. Just keep your money in bonds or high yield savings accounts. If you wanna get started with investing, open an account with Webull, fund it any dollar amount, get one free stock worth up to $1,400, open up a Robinhood brokerage account, you'll get another free stock and I have one one more week here left in Russia and I feel so rich because the dollar is sky high in comparison to the ruble and I'm just blowing my money all away on food because it's so delicious here and tomorrow I'm visiting my other grandfather who lives in a village and every time I visit I always get this question in my head that 
thinks about geographical arbitrage. And I've done this video before when it talks about moving to another country and retiring because you have such a higher purchasing power because of the difference in currencies and income. And it's crazy. And that makes me wonder, why don't I retire here? Why don't I move to another country, whether it's Thailand or Russia or wherever else, and just live my life peacefully without having to work a day in my life? But maybe it's a video I'll do next. It's really fun and I love exploring that concept. Love you all, enjoy your week. Follow me on Instagram if you'd like, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.